introduction. Uh, have a good morning, all of you. Now I'd like to talk with the permission of chair. My topic, MODCO cardiography in day-to-day -day practice. MODCO yet now alive. It is the backbone of clinical echocardiography. In the historical background, already said our uh, chairperson, sir, uh, P42D uh, uh, eco, MOD eco is the first, then 2D eco. So uh, uh, it gets importance yet now. Deep condolence, uh, all of you know, our eminent cardiologist of this country, ex director of NICBD. Professor Abu Zafar sir is no more. We like to pray for each of his departed soul. And he's the pioneer of uh, echocardiography uh, in our Bangladesh uh, when he was the director of NICBD. Uh, actually, uh, MO Deco, we can compare the when uh, horse is running, running horse in front of a uh, fixed movie camera. Movie camera means uh, M mode cursor and image is created. It can compare with this. M mode is defined as time motion display of the ultrasound wave along a chosen ultrasound line. It's provide a monodimensional views of the heart. All of the reflectors along this line are displayed along the time axis. Here M mode uh, as we see, this is the cursor probe and this is the ultrasound beam and image is created here uh, a line across the beam across the RV free wall, uh, interventricular septum, uh, LV cavity and posterior of the left ventricle. Here M mode image is created, uh, there is a uh, interventricular septum, RV free wall, RV cavity interventricular septum in diastole and posterior in diastole. We can measure it easily. Thickness and interventricular septum in diastole and posterior thickness. Uh, and same uh, in systole, interventricular septum, interventricular uh, ventricular cavity in systole and also posterior. Easily we can measure. If you consider technological point of view and mode, a single crystal rapidly alternates between transmission and receiver mode. A rapid updating result, a rapidly moving structure like valve leaflet can be monitored for their characteristic motion, a very high temporal resolution. It's important, is very important. It's the, it's the, it, it gives high temporal resolution and also special resolution as well. Physics of MODCO. If this motion pattern is obtained on moving cardiac structure, then the resulting image constitutes MODCO cardiography. MODCO cardiography is used to evaluate the morphology of structure, movement, and velocity of cardiac valves and walls and timing of cardiac events. Uh, during MOD evaluation, so many factors uh, should be keep in mind, like amplitude, velocity a time inter interval and morphology of the moving structure. Uh, this is the diagram, uh, this bar diagram, this uh, X axis is the distance, that means the depth of the ultrasound beam, and this is the time axis. This is the B mode, A mode, and M mode. B mode like dot like, A mode is spike like, when the B mode scan is swept from left to right with time, with time and M mode image is uh, produced usually. Uh, two scientists, Jack Curie and Pierre Curie in 1880, uh, discovered the piezoelectricity, uh, which is the main cornerstone uh, of the eco who gives uh, ultrasonic wave, create ultrasonic wave by Quartz crystal. The original description of MODCO actually in 1953 by two scientists, Inge Edler and Helmut Hertz. There are two scientists, historical perspective, the earliest motion mode or M mode ultrasound image was acquired on October 20, 19, uh, uh, and 1953 in Land, Sweden. 
the cl clinical cardiac ultras ultrasound uh, here the uh, paul edler and helmut hartz paul edler and helmut hartz uh, uh, two scientists uh, in front of them uh, their machine ultrasonic machine reflectoscope here harbe picken bomb with uh, paul edler Uh, this is the M wood uh, different wave form for 1953, 29 October. This is the first published echocardiograph of uh, M wood image of enteromitral leaflet and uh, AML. M wood image with ECG guided. Here, first mitral stenosis, M wood image, EF slope is reduced. It is recorded by Paul Edler and Hours, December 1953. An MOD echocardiogram is not a picture, just picture of the heart, but rather a diagram that shows how the position of its structure changed during the course of the cardiac cycle. MOD recording permit measurement of cardiac dimension and motion pattern, also facilitate analysis of time relationship with other physiological variables like ECG and heart sound. Here, Dr. Uh, Figen Bohm with his colleague. There was an opportunity uh, in Hyderabad with uh, Professor Figen Bohm in CSI. Here, one of the paper, uh, role of MO technique in today's echocardiography, written by Harvey Figen Bohm, which is published in Journal of American Society of Echocardiography. Uh, this is the uh, sonographer John Coffin Gammon examining a neonate uh, with an old Hopler Hoprel unit, uh, real to real video tap equipment at the bottom of the uh, Hoprel unit, which then could transfer M mode data. This is the M mode of neonate. This is the historical background, 40 years history of India uh, from past to present. It is written by uh, our Honorable Professor, Pioneer of Pico Cardiography, or Father of Pico Cardiography in India, Dr. Colonel S.K. Prashar, uh, which was the first president of IE. Yeah, uh, in India, uh, the MODICO, first MODICO uh, installed at Army Hospital, Delhi in 1975, then in Chennai, 1977 and 78. This is the first echocardiography illustrative uh, uh, book on M. Modico, written by Lakshmi Kathan and Professor Elegason in 1980. The first clinical application of M. Modico cardiography were concerned with the assessment of the mitral valve from shape of the corresponding waveform. Subsequently, the various M. Mod recording were related to their anatomical origin. When is it used, M. Modico? When the measurement of LA, aorta, LA mass, left ventricular measurement, LV function like MAPC, TAPC in case of RV global function, mitral valve assessment, especially mitral stenosis, mitral valve prolapse, tamponade, diastolic collapse, uh, uh, systolic anterior motion uh, in case of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and we can assess the pulmonary hypertension, MO cursor over the uh, pulmonary valve, and also diastolic dysfunction as well. One of the paper uh, in uh, ESCVI survey on standardization of cardiac chambers quantification by transthoracic echocardiography, which is published in European Heart Journal Cardiovascular Imaging 2020, uh, 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 latest updated. Here, uh, they showed that the many of the echocardiography center in Europe yet now use the conventional transthoracic echo, that means 2D and MO echo, then 3D, 4D. The features, uh, uh, M mode features in mitral stenosis, uh, decreased EF slope. Mm, I have seen the next slide. Paradoxical anterior diastolic motion of PML, separation between leaflets is decreased, thickening of the leaflet, early diastolic dip of interventricular septum, reduced mitral valve leaflet excursion, that means DE excursion, 
early pliability for uh, balloon metal valvotomy used to be decided on basis of DE amplitude. A metal valve with DE amplitude of 20 millimeter or more is usually considered valve is pliable. Uh, metal stenosis, uh, M mode echo here, uh, there's a uh, metal stenosis, but uh, here is the normal M mode motion. Here, my metal yep, is slope is uh, probably patient has got at here. So there is a thickening and also calcification of. Internet is so much about that. Monona? Monona, sir. Internet is so much American. Am I audible, uh, sir? Now it's clear. Screen share. Yes, yes. Go on, please. Okay. So DOF is a just end systole, uh, starting of diastole. EOF represent early diastolic filling. An early opening and a wave, uh, the mid diastolic or partial closure of metal valve, and a wave due to atrial kick, atrial systole, and c wave closure of uh, metal valve. That's that is ending of uh, diastolic period and starting of systole. And there is D slope, EF slope, and AC shoulder. Here shows metal stenosis in different uh, form or pattern of the wave. There is no A wave uh, and reduced EF slope. There is uh, uh, metal stenosis uh, and also uh, patient has got atrial fibrillation. Here, uh, same thing, uh, reduced EF slope, metal stenosis. Metal stenosis with atrial fibrillation and also uh, usually thicken uh, into metal leaflet and also PML as well. Here, uh, there is a, a D-shaped uh, uh, left ventricle due to uh, right ventricular volume and pressure overload and flattening uh, of the interventricular septum shows in M mode echo and also there is a reduced EF flow. M mode echo uh, at the aortic valve, at the level of aortic valve when uh, cursor is placed. Uh, here, three casts usually, uh, right, left, and non-coronary cast. But in case of plaques view, uh, we have seen usually right coronary and non-coronary cast. And sometimes leaflet, a uh, fine systolic fluttering in healthy individual, uh, we can see. Here, schematic uh, diagram is the uh, aortic road, uh, the end systole. Uh, there is a cast separation. This is the uh, right coronary cast, this is the non-coronary cast, this is the box shape, and there is an end systole. We can measure LA dimension. This slide uh, actually uh, from uh, H.I. Luthor Rahman Sar's uh, lecture, uh, pretty good uh, for bicuspid aortic valve with uh, probably aortic stenosis as because there is a reduced cusp separation and thickening of the uh, cusp and deformed box and eccentric closure line. And name mode cursor across the uh, valve and left atrium. Just we have uh, seen this patient yesterday. Uh, here, name mode cursor across the um, uh, right 
uh, ventricle, interventricle septum, LV cavity, and uh, the cursor just uh, uh, distal to the tip of the uh, meeting point of the ML and PML over the uh, corda tendini and also posterior wall. Here are the thickened uh, interventricle septum and also posterior wall. That means uh, concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. And we should keep in mind when the measurement of the uh, interventricular septum and also posterior wall should be keep in mind just endocardial border from right ventricular side and endocardial border from the left ventricular side. And also uh, when the measure the posterior wall uh, should be spa sparing the quarter uh, tendini and uh, papillary muscle wave form. Here, uh, left ventricle uh, seems to be dilated. Uh, here, we like to show, as you see, the uh, here the EPSS, E point septal separation from the uh, E point of the AML uh, to the uh, just margin of the interventricular septum. EPSS usually less than eight millimeter of mercury in normal. When the more than eight millimeter of mercury, it means the LV is dilated. The, uh, when the measurement gradually increases, that means LB is uh, increased in size. Here, parasternal short axis view. Uh, uh, we like to assess the TICOS method, left ventricular systolic function, M mode cursor or at the level of uh, papillary muscle. Here, uh, the thickness. The systolic thickening is reduced in interventricular septum, but uh, posterior uh, to some extent uh, systolic thickening present. Here, ejection fraction uh, we have seen uh, around 34 percent, that means 30 to 35 percent. And here, compare with uh, after uh, measurement of the uh, EPSS, EPSS is 20 millimeter of mercury. And also compare MEPC, same patient, just 8.7 millimeter. That is comparable by three methods in MODIPO. Here, by MODIPO, we can uh, measure or assess left ventricular mass when uh, we can well delineate the uh, interventricular septum and endocardial border and also posterior. Then, machine can uh, easily produce left ventricular mass along with ejection fraction, fractional shortening, etc. Here also uh, EPSS and also in C, uh, AC arm, there is a, uh, another wave, it's called B bump, is indicate raised uh, inter, uh, endastolic pressure of the left ventricle. We can assess by MODICO, the left ventricular dyssynchrony, uh, in case of a uh, left bundle branch block, here measure 138 millisecond of dyssynchrony. And uh, dyssynchrony, uh, dyssynchrony help us uh, for uh, CRT response. When the more than 130 millisecond, this is a good CRT response. Uh, here, M mode uh, shows the uh, right ventricle is usually dilated and paradoxical um, motion of the interventricular septum in the ASD patient. In case of aortic regurgitation, some features, mode features here, uh, we have seen diastolic fluttering of AML, diastolic fluttering of aortic valve, premature closure of mitral valve, premature opening of aortic valve, and also dilated, dilated left ventricle as well. Here, schematic representation, the AML, fluttering of the AML in case of aortic regurgitation, the fluttering of the AML, the fluttering of the AML. Here also, uh, as we see the premature, just premature opening of aortic valve in case of aortic regurgitation. Here also premature closure of the mitral valve in case of aortic regurgitation, in severe regurgitation. In regurgitant blood, compress the AML and partial occlusion of the mitral valve and causing the functional mitral regurgitation. 
Here the color M mode across the uh, uh, aortic valve and left atrium shows the mild uh, mitral uh, aortic regurgitation. It is collected uh, interesting cases in echocardiography written by Professor Nubin Sinondasar. Here also pan uh, diastolic uh, MOD mode uh, image here shows the pan diastolic aortic regurgitation. Now RB systolic function uh, we can assess by MOD code. Here are the some guideline uh, how to perform uh, TAPC, tricuspid annular plan systolic excursion, uh, which is a marker uh, for global uh, RB systolic function. Alignment should be the movement of the uh, tricuspid annulus, lateral annulus, which moves towards the apex, not the vertically upwards. It is some, ex some extent angulation. And annulus should be moving upward towards the apex during systole, and here, uh, gain should be decreased, avoid the noise artifact. A mode speed, medium to fast, look for a consistent signal throughout the systole and diastole, identify maximum systolic and diastolic exception of annulus motion, and measure usually vertically via leading is to leading is method. Here schematic diagram, TAPSI, uh, here is the uh, maximum systolic excursion and this vertical height is actually TAPC and usually uh, more than 17 millimeter is normal. Below 17 millimeter there is a uh, global RB systolic dysfunction. Here also uh, we uh, like to try taking uh, TAPC across the tricuspid annulus uh, pro, uh, <laughs> directed uh, towards the movement of tricuspid annulus, annulus towards the apex. Here, measurement uh, 14 millimeter, that means reduced, less than 17 millimeter. There is, to some extent, uh, reduced RB global systolic function. Here, uh, are not moving. From, collected from European Heart Journal Cardiovascular Imaging uh, in 2015, here are some a TFC 20 millimeter, but some limitation here. Uh, in this method, there is a limitation. It is angle dependency and partially representative in RB, uh, considering RB global function. Uh, one of the uh, article, is MO echocardiography still important? Uh, it is, uh, is in echocardiography, uh, journal of echocardiography. He has said, MOT echocardiography offers two major advantages. Uh, here, it is very precious timing of cardiac events because of its rapid sampling rate and excellent axial resolution. These features are advantageous in several clinical settings. Now, uh, uh, about uh, mitral valve prolapse, MOT features. Here, thick uh, redundant mitral valve leaflet a uh, mild to late systolic sagging back of the anterior and uh, posterior, uh, both mitral valve leaflet, usually uh, more than two millimeter from CT point of mitral valve, and also hollow systolic sagging back or prolapsing of the anterior, posterior, both mitral leaflet, more than three millimeter from the CT point of uh, mitral valve. <laughs> Here, uh, clearly uh, seen the CT point, uh, this is the uh, closer point, this is the opening point. Here, the sagging of the PML, hammock like appearance due to uh, prolapse of the posterior mitral leaflet. Schematic representation the posterior leaflet prolapsing uh, in the late systole. Here, also, both the leaflet in uh, sagging or prolapsing, uh, both AML and PML. Here also prolapsing, uh, complete prolapsing of the uh, PML and partly AML. Associated mitral valve, uh, all of we know the mitral valve prolapse uh, usually associated with mitral regurgitation. Here shows the mitral regurgitation, color mosaic. Here also posterior mitral leaflet, hammock like appearance, the prolapsing in MODICO. 
Here also prolapsing of the both AML and PML. Now, uh, SAM, systolic anterior motion in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, schematic representation of the systolic motion of the anterior <laughs> Please get everyone muted, please. Please, please. 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 They are hugely thickened uh, interventricular septum and also as well SAM also present. Here there is no SAM, just concentric uh, LB hypertrophy. Uh, we can assess diastolic RB collapse in case of cardiac tamponade. There is a uh, diastolic RB collapse uh, in diastole. Usually diastole, there is an outward movement, but there is an inward movement of the RB free wall. M -mode, by M mode eco, we can uh, measure the inferior vena cava and uh, its uh, collapsibility of the during inspiration and expiration. Here, uh, we can uh, measure uh, during inspiration and expiration, usually uh, normal diameter uh, below 21 millimeter of inferior vena cava. When more than 21 millimeter on an average, that means inferior vena cava is dilated and collapsibility usually more than 50%. If less than 50%, uh, uh, it suggests high right atrial pressure. LA myxoma. We can assess by M eco left atrial mass, usually LA myxoma. Here also uh, uh, created functional mitral stenosis, blunted key point of the mitral valve, decreased EF slope like mitral stenosis, heavy bend of echoes behind the anterior mitral leaflet in diastole, Eco free space at anterior mitral leaflet at onset of diastole prior to dense echo from tumor. This is the uh, nice, pretty good, uh, visual, nicely visualized. There is a dense shadow behind the AML, AML uh, uh, due to left atrial myxoma. Here also shows the behind the AML, there is a dense shadow due to uh, left atrial myxoma. Here, uh, clearly uh, visualized when M mode cars are placed over the aortic valve and the left atrium, there is a dense homogeneous shadow due to left atrial myxoma and causing <coughs> to some extent diastolic uh, doming of the AML when the uh, myxoma passes uh, passing through the, um, try to passing through the mitral valve and created functional mitral stenosis. Here also normal uh, uh, pulmonary uh, bulb M mode image. There is a, a wave, B wave, C wave, D wave, E F, etc. Uh, here the uh, uh, pulmonary valve showing a large A deep due to pulmonary stenosis. There, there is a uh, as because pulmonary stenosis. There is a normal uh, pulm pulmonary diastolic systolic pressure. Uh, and right atrial, right atrial contraction and produces the A wave. And for that reason, uh, clearly visible A, a wave in my, uh, uh, pulmonary stenosis. At the normal uh, pulmonary valve, uh, it is taken from uh, third edition of thick and bone echocardiography. Here, uh, in case of pulmonary hypertension, uh, to sign uh, loss of a deep here loss of a deep and flying y sign of arrowhead arrowhead sign and a loss of a deep due to uh, increased pulmonary arterial diastolic pressure over the beyond the right ventricular pressure and right atrial pressure so that right atrial contraction does not uh, creating the a wave and also uh, the uh, mid systolic closure and left systolic opening due to raised pulmonary vascular resistance and causing uh, flying Y sign. There is an article, the role of m echocardiography in patients with heart failure with bizarre ejection fraction, a prospective cohort study in uh, China. 
this is the another uh, 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 modalities or items diastolic wall strain uh, was calculated by using the formula which is the uh, markers of also diastolic dysfunction diastolic wall strains equal to left ventricular posterior wall thickness and end systole minus left ventricular posterior wall, wall thickness and end diastole divided by left ventricular posterior wall thickness at end systole it is the ratio diastolic wall, wall strain is a new marker for determining diastolic function uh, as i mentioned previously and also used as a marker of abnormal mechanics of the heart uh, one of the uh, echocardiographic param parameter the diastolic wall strain is a physical property of the myocardial uh, tissue diastolic wall strain, uh, strain predicts the presence of heart failure reserve ejection fraction here uh, the technique we measure the posterior wall thickness and systole and posterior uh, wall thickness in diastole in this way we can measure this way Now, color Doppler uh, mode, mode flow propagation. Uh, this method is basically a means of determining how the apex is stiffer, so much stiffer, and also uh, applies less suction effects uh, during early diastole. Thus, blood flow will be slower, and the degree of diastole dysfunction increases, and blood flow is slower from base to apex. Here, in the normal, in case of uh, normal diastole pattern, there is a normal. Uh, uh, propagation velocity, but when the grade one diastole dysfunction, there is a steeper slope is steeper and more more steeper when in case of grade two diastole dysfunction. Uh, mode color Doppler, uh, there is a, a normal already mentioned delayed relaxation phase and restrictive pattern phase. That means gradually steeper of the uh, 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 the mode. And here is the measurement, uh, the um, velocity propagation. In the presence of diastolic dysfunction, the slope will decrease and flow might not even reach the apical region. In normal individual, the slope will be more than 30 centimeter per second. When E by uh, velocity propagation ratio, when more than 2.5 pulmonary capillary waste pressure is usually more than 15 millimeter of mercury. Here is the technique, how can we measure the slope? But there is a limitation of this method. Uh, the limitation is that reproducibility of the measurement is rather poor, and it may, might be quite difficult to determine the exact slope because the color spectrum may be quite fuzzy. So we can assess the uh, uh, by diagnose in by M modico metal bulb uh, uh, vegetation or any bulb vegetation, aortic bulb vegetation by M. Modico. Here also the vegetation, but looks like uh, LA mass. Uh, it is one of the differential diagnoses. But here you actually metal bulb endocarditis and this vegetation behind the AML. M. Mod offers better time and image resolution, but here the more frame rate, sampling rate, 18 100 per second, but in case of 2D, 30 to 50 per second, here disadvantage, monodimensional or single dimension, just depth on, only, and non-perpendicular orientation, and always need 2D guided. There is a uh, reasons uh, why we use MO decocardiography. It's a better estimation of time interval, sample evaluation of dyssynchrony, simple evaluation of dyssynchrony, Motion pattern of normal ab or and abnormal structure identify high frequency motion, <laughs> insight into mechanism of paradoxical pulse and tamponade, better evaluation of prostative valve function, diagnose arrhythmia even without EKG, color M mode for timing flow propagation like uh, diastolic dysfunction we can measure by M mode decor. Now at the uh, end of my lecture, now take home masses. It's the schematic representation, diagrammic representation. This is the normal uh, M mode pattern of the ML and PML, uh, mitral valve. There is a mitral stenosis with sinus rhythm. Uh, without ECG, we can assume there is a AOF and uh, with 
mitral stenosis with atrial fibrillation. There is no A wave and LA myxoma. There is a dense shadow in between the uh, AML and PML. ACM, there is a systolic anterior motion of the AML and MB prolapse. There is a hemoc-like appearance and prolapsing of PML. MB prolapse in both leaflet AML, PML and the flyle of the posterior leaflet of mitral valve and a mild aortic regurgitation. There is a uh, fluttering of the AML, but in case of CV area, there is a most prominent fluttering wave of the AML. So thank you very much. Thank you all for patient sharing. Thank you, Dada, for your excellent journey throughout the emoticocardiography. With you, we actually went back to the realm of echocardiography at the advent of this technology. Uh, I think by this time, uh, some questions are already present in the chat box. I will request you to uh, just answer to the questions. Dr. Rehan has asked how left bundle branch block in DCM can be evaluated by M mode. Left bundle branch block, LV systolic function. In case of uh, left bundle branch block, how how can left bundle branch block in dilated cardiomyopathy be evaluated by M mode echocardiography? In M mode echocardiography, there is a dyssynchrony of the uh, interventricular septum and uh, septum and posterior wall. There is a uh, there is a dyssynchrony. We can uh, all I have seen already one of the slide. There is a uh, it will be dyssynchrony between the interventricular septum and the posterior wall. Then we can assess LBV. And when ECG guided, ECG can also guide in that case. Right. I think there are two basic changes in this setting. One is there will be changes in E point septal separation, that is, EPSS will be more than eight millimeter, uh, number one. And number two, that there will be features of. Uh, changes in the septum of left bundle branch block, and yes. there, there will be in the uh, uh, jerky movement in the paradox, uh, left bundle branch septum. Yes. Next question yes. is by, by Dr. Rehan also, uh, what is the EPSS and B bump in M mode? Yes, EPSS E point septal separation uh, usually uh, usually measured uh, uh, from the e, from E point to the uh, inner edge of the interventricular septum and it is the vertical height uh, it, it can easily measure by mo deco and uh, usually less than 8 millimeter is normal more than 8 millimeter that means it's gradually increasing that means left ventricle is gradually increasing in size and also uh, in case uh, in case of uh, dcm or icm pressure invariably eps is uh, uh, increasing uh, size and a raised EDP, BBM indicates raised and diastolic left ventricular pressure. There is an additional wave in uh, AC shoulder. Yes, I think uh, you have displayed uh, in a good manner in your presentation already, EPSS and B-bump in mode echocardiography. Uh, he also wants to know, can hammocking of PML be diagnostic of MVP? Yes, uh, hammocking, but uh, not only MO deco, it also uh, uh, correlates with 2D uh, image, uh, the prolapsing uh, from the uh, anu annular plane, mitral annular plane, usually 2 millimeter or more than 2 millimeter towards the left atrium uh, during, during systole. I think there is, there is some confusion regarding the terminology and diagnostic criteria for diagnosing hammocking, billowing, and also the prolapse, flail, right. uh, these terms are to some extent confusing. But uh, for presence of hammocking of PML in emotico cardiography, this is actually not diagnostic of a mitral valve prolapse. For the diagnosis of mitral valve prolapse, you have to depend on 2D echocardiography, especially parasternal long axis view has been recommended. And if the tip of the mitral yes. valve deflates, I have gone uh, towards the left atrium at least for up to three millimeter or beyond, then uh, this fulfills the criteria of mitral valve prolapse. prolapse. And isolated hammocking may be a normal feature. 
uh, without without uh, prolapsing the tip of the mitral valve. So hammocking and billowing may be a relatively benign feature, and these are not fulfilling the criteria for the diagnosis of a mitral valve prolapse. The next one, what is Dr. eccentricity Mano, index? Yes, sir. Dr. Mano, can, can I have also the comments from Meskat about this mitral yes, valve prolapse? Yes. yes. Professor Meskat, can you throw some light also about this? Sir, MMOD is undoubtedly a, a, one of the better uh, means of assessing the mitral valve prolapse. The whole uh, process of mitral valve prolapse is, is a dynamic process. It can occur straight in the systole, it can be pan systolic. So exact timing of the prolapse is important. By using only, only two-dimensional echocardiography, we will not be able to look at the timing of, of the prolapse. Uh, th that is why M mode is uh, very complementary to 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 the M to the echocardiography in assessing mitral valve prolapse. Uh, we we really need to know the exact timing of prolapse. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question is: By TAPAC, we measure right ventricular ejection fraction. Like it, can we use MAPAC? That is MAPC for measurement of left ventricular ejection fraction? Yes, of course. Uh, we can use, uh, I have uh, uh, shown this one of the slide uh, measurement of the uh, MAPS C. Uh, that, that means the M mode cursor, uh, apical four chamber view, M mode cursor along the uh, lateral uh, annulus uh, and movement towards the apex, just angulation to some extent. and. Uh, on, and we can measure and uh, uh, MOD image. There is a systolic excursion uh, from NRDs in uh, uh, to systolic excursion in systole and all diastole. This is the vertical height. It uh, correlate usually it is the bedside echo. Usually severe LV dysfunction. Uh, in case of severe LV dysfunction, uh, usually it, it can get importance in MAPSI. Kobirujaman sir. Uh, if you are present, can you make a comment on whether we can have grading of mild, moderate, severe LV systolic dysfunction uh, by measuring the MAPC? Uh, I think Sir may not be present. Uh, I'm, I'm to. Uh, sure, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My friend, Mitral annular uh, excursion, uh, annular excursion, basically this, this work was done by one of the Bangladeshi who is now the director of non invasive cardiology department in Karolinska University, Sweden. And uh, it was his thesis topics, Mamishing Medical College, Gobindo, Gobindo Palet, Desher Manush. So, Mahubul Hak, it is our original paper, it is uh, and we have been knowing about the MAPC since he, he was doing his PhD work. And it was sent to uh, uh, American College of Cardiology, reviewed by Sheila, N.B. Sheila. And since then, uh, it has become one of the mode, mode of uh, assessment of left ventricular systolic function. And some equation has also been proposed. That is MAPC into 10 plus 3. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the equation differs uh, in different places. At a constant uh, equation, roughly, roughly maps into 10 plus 5. I think it's too overestimation. Maps it. 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 Mild, moderate, severe, at a grading course, course in EPSS, the maps, the go in the studio, the Hakatu, grading for the equation Equation equation, meaning same, these are all same quantity measures. Uh, we should not, uh, we should not transform this into quantity measures. Amrato Jani actually left ventricular. Systolic function, amra, we never could quantify excepting MRI and 3D echo. At the semi quantitative measure, they should quantify it. And as you say, 
মাইল্ড মডারেট সিভিয়ার এরকম ভাবে আমরা ভাগ করতে পারি কিনা আমরা জানি যে ইপিএসএস এর বেলা এটা করা যায় ম্যাপসের বেলাও করা যায় আমার একটা স্যার 13 এর বেশি 13 এর বেশি থাকলে বলা হয় যে ইটস নরমাল যদি 9 টু 11 থাকে তাহলে মাইল্ড ইমপেয়ারমেন্ট বলা হয় 9 এর নিচে থাকে পরে সিভিয়ার ইমপেয়ারমেন্ট এরকম বলা হয় কিন্তু এটা খুব ভ্যারি করে কনস্ট্যান্ট কিছু না longitudinal muscle orientation. so it is, that's why it is overestimated yes. and it's not uh, the perfect measurement for lv ejection fraction thank you sir uh, uh, monowar uh, sir ami jeta dr nilufar bolechen mapsi che tapsi keno important beshi nilufar exactly same kotha tai bolechen je ashole rv er je muscle orientation gulo shegulo longitudinal fiber gulo onek beshi thake so tader contribution ta beshi thake so that in that regards ট্যাপসিটা বেশি ইম্পর্টেন্ট বেশি রিপ্রেজেন্ট করে আর ভি ফাংশনকে এবং ম্যাপসির ফাংশন আমাদের লেফট ভেন্টিকুলার ফাংশন মেজারমেন্টের আমাদের আরও অনেকগুলো প্যারামিটার আছে সেই জন্যই আমরা ম্যাপসির উপর অত বেশি গুরুত্ব দেই না তবে সারোগেট মার্কার হিসেবে আমরা দেখে নিতে পারি যে ম্যাপসিটা ওকে দশের নিচে আছে তার মানে আমার ইজেকশন ফাংশনটা মেবি কম হতে পারে এটা জাস্ট একটা ক্লুইকো তো আসলে ডেফিনেটিভ কোনো কিছুই আমাদেরকে দেয় না আমাদের সবগুলো প্যারামিটার নিয়েই কাজ করতে হয় করে একটা কুমুলেটিভ কনক্লুসিভ একটা ডিসিশন দিতে হয় যেটা আমরা অনেক সময় ভুল করে ফেলি যে আমরা একটা মেজারমেন্ট কি ফিক্সড পয়েন্ট ধরে ওটার উপরই অনেক বেশি যারা জুনিয়র আছে আমরা তারা কাজ করতে চাই আসলে ইকোটা একটা জিনিসের উপর তিন চারটা প্যারামিটার নিয়ে আমাকে মেজার করা উচিত আমার মনে হয় যে মনোহর ও আমার বন্ধু মনোহর আরো কিছু হয়তো বলতে পারবে এই জিনিসটা थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर डॉक्टर রবিউল ইসলাম সরকার আই থিংক উই শুড প্রসিড টু দা নেক্সট क्वेश्चन for measurement of tapsi which line is considered vertical or angulated line of course of course angulated line as because the uh, uh, lateral and tricuspid annulus move towards the apex and uh, for that reason there is to some angulation not vertical it is the annular movement towards the apex and height when the image is created m mode here also a uh, height this height je bhabe amra nei na keno upore systolic and diastolic maximum systolic excursion and diastolic dui ta end jodi angulation kore neya hoy othoba vertically height o neya hoy same result as one of the drawback of measurement of tapsi is that this is angle dependent and for this yes. reason, this is yes. this is this is error prone another important uh, consideration is that during measurement of tapsi we consider the movement of the tricuspid annulus not the muscle not. and for the measurement of s prime during the assessment of the right ventricular systolic function we place the cursor at the level of lower third of annulus. the uh, lateral wall of the right ventricle so there is a difference between the two and we should consider this during interpretation as well what are the dds of systolic anterior motion of amm is it specific for just uh, hocm or not so far i know uh, it's not uh, specific but it can guide uh, the there is a, a systolic anterior motion of the uh, aml in case of hocm uh, it can guide us the presence of uh, some uh, obstruction uh, in the lbot obstruction but it is not the uh, exact uh, actual to so inhok madam can you make some comments it can be uh, assessed by another method lbot gradient and others method uh, proved by madam are you are you connected lutfaro man sir can you make some comments Probably, probably his his internet connection is uh, disturbed right internet is a very important issue professor twin is not there i think no he is he is uh, connect she is connected or not meshkat she was she was connected but probably professor meshkat you have got some comments 
Yes, sir. Uh, uh, it is not a specific for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Any any pathology that causes obstruction in the left ventricular outflow tract uh, can produce uh, systolic anterior motion. And we know in some patients with a concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle, even concentric hypertrophy due to cardiomyopathy, all these in all these subsets of uh, people, there can be dynamic obstruction. And wh whenever there is dynamic obstruction, there we will get some form of systolic anterior motion. That is, yes, the there is nothing. Why this is not specific. I think there is nothing specific for the diagnosis of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, and uh, even systolic anterior motion of mitral valve may be present in hypovolemia or diabetic cardiomyopathy or even other sorts of, even after mitral valve repair. And for this reason, this is not specific. All other findings should be considered in total to make the appropriate diagnosis. Number one. Number two, can there I may add be add another add, Can I add some something? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Manor, in case yes. of long slender AML, it can also produce a SAM. AML. Yes. Yes. Long there is another term like cordal sum. Yes, cordal sum. Yes. Yes. Corda attached to the anterior mitral leaflet yes. of mitral valve may produce systolic yes. anterior motion. Uh, let us go to the next question. During echo, when we angulate a mode cursor and when the cursor will be more vertical? I think the question is ambiguous. Uh, you may better give a direction which should be the ideal direction of the M just cursor line during interrogation by MOD echocardiography. Should, should it be vertical to the uh, long axis of the heart or anything else? This is obviously what is the recommendation? And the current recommendation is at the level of the tip of the mitral valve. Yes, right. Right. Uh, when, sh when and where should cursor be placed for measurement of the dimensions of inferior vena cava by MOD echocardiography? Usually, uh, cursor should be MOD cursor. Uh, it's uh, just away from the uh, uh, junction of the inferior vena cava and right to two to three millimeter away. Usually. Should it, should it be before or after the opening of the hepatic veins? Is there any relation or recommendation? Just uh, uh, just uh, uh, beyond the opening uh, hepatic vein, opening of hepatic vein, distal to that. That is the that is the area between the opening of the hepatic vein and the uh, connection with the right atrium. Not beyond the hepatic veins. Not beyond. Yes. Right. Right. With this, we think we should go to the second presentation. Sir, should Monor, you proceed? Act a, act a second. <laughs> yes, sir. Con confusion, I am not the proximal. I am not going to be clear. Yes, sir. 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 Say you know, when you proximal distal Kimba away, we should not bully right at your relation, I mean, hepatic vein relation, bully would have a high tell us about the nuclear. Proximal always means to the heart, proximal to the heart, proximal means proximal to the heart. Yes, sir. And I think the recommendations from the authorities also differ. But what is recommended that, uh, and also by American Society of Echocardiography, is that it should be proximal to the opening of the hepatic veins into the inferior vena cava, that is towards the heart, towards the right atrium, just after the opening, opening, of, opening the of the vein. hepatic veins. This should be, but some authorities recommend that it should be measured few millimeters away from the opening into the right atrium. So the opinion differs to some extent. Sir, should we proceed to the second presentation? Yeah, any comments from the panelists, I think. Uh, Professor Lutfu Roman Khan yet to connect it. Professor Khandogar Kambul is, uh, Islam is there. Sir, Khandogar yeah. Kambul Islam, sir. Please make some comments. Sir, unmute for an answer. Unmute. I uh, unmute. 
थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर गोविंदो नाइसली इलाबोरेट इज चैप्टर्स ए मोड इको हाँ इको इज एडवांस नाइसली बट स्टिल ए मोड हैज सम इम्पोर्टेंस एंड डॉक्टर गोविंदो नाइसली इलाबोरेटेड ऑल द एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इमोड still im mode has some value for measuring so we should during procedures measuring we should uh, uh, mainly take precautions so that minor error sometime may produce significant abnormality hmm. uh, finally dr gobindo add everything uh, uh, and so hope we can go proceed to the next speaker thank you thank you sir monohar i have a question to dr bindu actually can i can i ask you a question bolo khaled khaled bolo monohar when we are measuring the intraventricular septum by m mode we all know that it has contribution from the right ventricle and the left ventricle so how can we accurately differentiate the left ventricular part of the ivs during measuring in m mode the question to question to home dr gobindo <laughs> is speaker okay thank you sir uh, i already mentioned uh, in uh, my slide uh, during measurement of uh, interventricular septum should be caution the uh, rb rb site endocardial border of the interventricular septum and also lb site uh, endocardial border this border should be uh, clearly visible and image and then i can measure the thickness of interventricular septum but many of there is a rb site the rb site there is there may be a uh, uh, trabeculi there is maybe a false impression there is a if you, if you consider the uh, or taken the measurement the trabeculi there is a false impression Give faulty results. 